Planet Earth, a world teeming with life. Across its oceans, jungles, mountains, and other ecosystems, there's a lot going on. From the frozen peaks of the Himalayas to the coral reefs of the Pacific, Earth is bursting with color and life. But those are just the things we can actually see. Beneath the atmosphere of this amazing world is a hidden ecosystem, one of bits and bytes. In the digital world, an immense amount of data is processed each and every day, consisting of data from billions of devices that are constantly syncing, streaming, and logging an immense amount of information. Every second, selfies are uploaded, businesses crunch numbers, and someone somewhere is definitely streaming a cat video in 4K. Believe it or not, we Earthlings generate around 400 million terabytes of data every 24 hours. In fact, we produce more data every two minutes than all of humanity has up to the year 2000. But how do we mere humans build infrastructure that can handle such a vast amount of information? Well, the answer is big data, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to talk about big data, a brand new topic on this channel. In particular, we're going to talk about what big data is and why it's so important. In addition to that, I'm also going to highlight some of the software that helps us manage it. And at the heart of big data is, you guessed it, Linux. But not only that, open source software plays a huge role too. After all, Linux and open source software is the most customizable on the planet, so naturally it's adapted to power all kinds of things, such as smart bulbs, smartphones, televisions, servers, and, relevant to our topic today, big data deployments. And big data itself represents a huge shift in not only the technology industry, but how we do business globally. As people all over the world purchase products, review their favorite movies, play online games, check the weather, or interact with any app or service, we need to have a proven and reliable system in place that's able to efficiently and strategically handle all of that traffic. And that's exactly what big data represents. It's how companies are able to handle large sets of data while delivering results at lightning speed. But as important as big data is, it mostly exists behind locked server room doors. So it's not something that comes up in discussion all that often. After all, if someone buys shoes on Amazon, they don't really think about how that order was processed. They're just happy to have a new pair of sneakers. Big Data is an unseen hero, working diligently in the background while the majority of the population ignores it. And you know what? I think Big Data deserves more recognition. And that's why I've teamed up with Open Metal to produce this video and give you an overview about it, and also to serve as an entry point for those of you within my audience that are curious about the subject. And relevant to this channel, I'll shine some light on the fact that entire Big Data deployments can be built using strictly open source software. So that way you can have an entire solution that's free of services that are locked behind expensive licensing or proprietary solutions. And to start us off, what I'm going to do in the next section is talk more about what big data is, as well as some of the concepts and technologies that exist within its ecosystem. So join me as we explore big data. First, let's spend a few moments talking about what big data is and why it's so important. As I mentioned earlier in the video, mankind generates a ginormous amount of data regularly. Every second of every day, countless people are uploading photos, sharing their statuses, buying products, ordering meals, and getting directions to their destination. As I'm sure you can imagine, if we employed people to individually handle every request that's made online, the number of workers we'd have to hire to manually process this data would be impossible. And keep in mind, here on Earth we generate hundreds of exabytes each and every day. As the data we generate grows exponentially, technology needs to scale along with it. And as we scale our infrastructure, we'll naturally run into a series of challenges along the way. And it's how we overcome these hurdles that determines whether our company succeeds or fails. For example, let's say you've developed a brand new social media app and you have just a small number of users. Then one day, perhaps your app starts to become popular and turns into the next big thing. One of the first challenges you'll run into is that a single server just won't cut it anymore. Eventually, you'll have to create a cluster of servers in order to keep up with the traffic. Another situation that you're likely to run into is storage constraints. Maybe you've created enough servers to keep up with the demand, but as people upload more and more photos to your service, you'll have to build a separate storage cluster to store everything. At that point, you now have a large number of servers, and also some additional challenges. 
For example, how do you set up your servers to sync with one another? How do you set up and queue messages to be delivered between them? What's the most efficient way to configure a transactional database server to minimize response times? And once you have a large database, how do you make logical connections in order to understand your customers better? Basically, big data translates to a large quantity of information. But the concept is more than just a term to describe a large flood of ones and zeros. It also involves building a solution that's able to process everything. And this involves a specific set of instructions and a combination of services called a pipeline that keeps everything running smoothly. The pipelines that we create within big data consist of best practices and associated tools that give us the ability to handle an immense amount of data automatically. And like I mentioned during the intro, Linux is a major player in this space. As I'm sure you know by now, Linux powers just about everything these days, from servers to smartphones. And even when we focus on just servers, there's a wide spectrum of use cases. From a personal blog running on a single individual virtual machine, to large services that run on tens of thousands of servers. And, since Linux scales very well, it's a natural choice for big data, since our infrastructure should grow along with our demand. Another benefit of choosing Linux for big data is that you benefit from its reliability and the fact that it can be tuned in all kinds of ways in order to ensure peak performance. In fact, the vast majority of big data operations utilize Linux. But Linux isn't the only major player in this field. Open source software is also a natural fit for big data. Whenever we create pipelines, it's important that we configure each and every service to ensure our needs are met. And nothing is more customizable than open source technologies. While proprietary technologies do exist within big data, Linux and open source gives us the most control and flexibility. And as an aside, when I first started, Linux had a very small footprint. Even the occasional server running it was a rare sight. During my career, I watched Linux start off as the underdog in virtually every category and then grow to now have the largest market share when it comes to both traditional data centers and big data. The growth has been incredible. Anyway, like I mentioned, big data involves a pipeline, which refers to an assembly line of sorts geared towards processing huge workloads. But what exactly does a big data pipeline consist of? Well, let's discuss that. A big data pipeline is a structured and automated process that takes massive amounts of raw data, often coming from multiple different sources, and turns it into something useful. You can think of it as a supply chain for data. The process starts with raw data, which is collected from various sources, such as from apps, logs, databases, and so on. And then that data is organized and converted into a specific format. Finally, the data is stored and then analyzed in order to extract insights or make decisions. Each stage of the pipeline is able to handle an immense volume of data reliably and efficiently, and is able to get the job done in near or real time. This allows organizations to scale their businesses to always be able to keep up with their customers' demand. A big data pipeline consists of any number of servers, applications, and services that are designed to communicate with one another and spread the workload. And I've already mentioned Linux, which is the platform of choice for big data to run on. After that, it's just a question of which services in particular you should configure to handle the workload. And among these solutions, here are some of the highlights. First, Apache Kafka. Kafka is a distributed platform for handling high-volume event streaming and messaging between systems. It allows different services in a big data pipeline to publish and subscribe to data streams in real time. And this makes it a backbone for moving large amounts of data quickly and reliably. Next, Delta Lake. Delta Lake is an open source storage layer that adds reliability and structure to traditional data lakes. It supports ACID transactions, schema enforcement, and time travel queries, making large data sets easier to manage. And with this solution, teams can trust their data while still benefiting from the flexibility of a lake. Continuing, Ceph. Ceph is a distributed storage platform that provides object, block, and file storage in a single system. It's designed to scale horizontally, allowing organizations to store petabytes of data reliably across clusters of commodity hardware. And when it comes to big data pipelines, Ceph often serves as a foundation for cost-effective and resilient data storage. Next up, Apache Spark. Spark is a powerful data processing engine known for speed and scalability. It allows developers to run analytics, ETL tasks, and machine learning workloads across massive datasets and memory. This makes it a key tool for driving insights quickly from big data. Also, MLflow. MLflow is a platform that helps manage the entire machine learning lifecycle. 
It tracks experiments, organizes code and dependencies, and also streamlines the deployment of models. By doing this, MLflow ensures reproducibility and simplifies collaboration in data science teams. Continuing, ClickHouse. ClickHouse is a column-oriented database built for fast online analytical processing, OLAP. It excels at running real-time queries on large volumes of data, making it great for dashboards and analytics. Because of its speed and efficiency, ClickHouse has become a favorite for analyzing logs, metrics, and other high-volume data sets. And the last technology that I want to highlight in this section is Debezium. Debezium is a tool for change data capture, CDC, which means it continuously streams changes from relational databases and other sources into systems like Kafka. This allows big data pipelines to react to updates in real time instead of relying on batch jobs. In practice, Debezium is key for keeping data synchronized across modern architectures. Now that we have a general idea of some of the solutions that are available, where do we run them? Well, there's three primary types of architecture that's used. The first of these is bare metal. Bare metal deployments refer to software that's installed on actual physical servers. Basically, the old-fashioned way. As you can imagine, running dedicated servers isn't all that efficient nowadays, since anytime you want to add additional services, you need to place an order with your server provider and wait for it to arrive at your door. For that reason, bare metal is the least common type of infrastructure for big data, but it does exist. Second, public cloud deployments are those that are built within a cloud provider, with common providers being AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, DigitalOcean, and others. In this scenario, you're using someone else's server infrastructure to run the services that your business needs. The downside, though, is that you don't have full control or visibility on how your data is being handled. You're basically trusting someone else to do a job and hoping that they do. Third, private cloud deployments are similar to public cloud, with the difference being that the company runs everything themselves, even the underlying virtualization engine. While private clouds are more difficult when it comes to the initial implementation, you gain full control and have full visibility. Another benefit is that this also means you could customize your environment from the ground up and tune it for the best possible performance, which directly benefits big data. As you can see, big data is a very important topic, and it's one that doesn't get discussed all that often. In today's video, I wanted to shed some light on this subject and also go over some key terms and concepts. And if this look into big data has you thinking about where you could run these powerful open source pipelines, that's where Open Metal comes in. They provide on-demand, hosted private clouds, which give you the best of the infrastructure worlds we discussed earlier. You'll get the power and performance of dedicated bare metal, which is helpful for processing huge data sets with tools like Apache Spark and ClickHouse, but with the flexibility and ease of the cloud. And if you're feeling adventurous, the team over at OpenMetal has put together a handy guide that shows you exactly how to build a modern data lakehouse from scratch using open source tools. In that guide, you'll learn how to set up a complete big data pipeline that captures database changes with Debezium, streams them through Kafka, stores them in S3 compatible Ceph object storage, and processes it all with Apache Spark and Delta Lake. It's a perfect hands-on starter guide for those eager to jump into building for big data. So if you're ready to start exploring, or you want to learn more about an infrastructure option that's built for big data, check out the link in the description below. Definitely download that free guide and learn more about how OpenMetal can support even the most complex big data workloads. And there you go. In today's video, we explored the world of big data. We took a look at what big data is, as well as some of the concepts and technologies that are used within its ecosystem. Now, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. I'm really interested in reading what you guys have to say. Especially let me know if there's any concepts within big data you want to learn. And who knows, maybe I'll do a video about it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. And also, thanks to Open Metal for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already subscribed to Learn Linux TV, make sure you do so. There's some awesome Linux-related content coming to this channel very soon. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.